how do you deal with snarky subordinates? What are we in? 2021 now? I gotta tell you, I joined the military in 2000. I was 12 years active duty before jumping into the corporate world and doing the corporate leadership thing. So 12 years active duty, Coast Guard, I know. Put your jokes in the comment. Heard them all, heard them all. They're amazing. Uh, and now currently Air National Guard, um, frequent mobilizations, whatever. So, you know, my point is, there's like this new troop. There's this new subordinate, whatever you want to call it. You know, these, these guys were born in 2000, a little bit sooner sometimes. And the, the snark level has gone way up. It's, it's like, it's like passive aggression, kind of a weird wandering lostness in the world, not being heard, understood. <sighs> On a practical level, all right, it's a delicate problem because it's toxic. It, in my first stint in the military, the, the toxicity was bad attitudes, people complaining. So in, in that regard, like not much has changed, but now you have almost like, the, it reminds me of high school, these emo kids that wore like the dark black hair and the bangs and, you know, look, sound like Eeyore walking around. Where's my tail? Where's my tail? But now they're like, now they're a second generation of them and they're in the military. Like what? I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be professional here. Okay, the military has a unique problem. Here's a unique problem. 12 years active duty military, seven years corporate leadership, the director level, worldwide firm. One thing I loved about corporate leadership is you could really take that Malcolm Gladwell adage, you know, put the right people on the bus in the right seat and the bus goes the right direction. And it's inverse is really, if somebody was in the wrong seat, you could talk to them. And, and I've done that many times. You sit down, we'll call him Jim or Jen. Hey Jen, you, you, don't, you really don't seem happy. Like, are you okay? Is there anything I could do to help you? You know, I just want to know that your success is a priority of mine and I want you to be happy. And if this job really wasn't working out for you, you know, I, I can help you find another. I could, but this role seems like it's not going to work for you. You can fire people is what I'm getting at. You, you have to go within your, your guidelines and parameters of your HR department. Um, and you have to do it with, with sincerity and you have to be genuine about it. You can't just run around like a tyrant. But in the military, you get a bad seed in there and it's and it, and it's it hurts it's miserable because while you can technically separate people in the military you know i'm sure there'll be a deluge of comments about all the paperwork and what good supervisors do but it's not the same you know when you fire someone in the corporate world if you have hr behind you, you they, they get a call at lunch you walk down and you have that talk and, and that's it they're gone that day and you start rehiring and, and hopefully you do a better job hiring let's let's be accountable to that um and you fill the right spot but in the military it's a long arduous painful process and a lot of people suffer because someone's sitting in the corner the peanut gallery remember when we used to call it the peanut gallery someone's sitting in the corner cracking wise jokes about everything okay so what do you do about it There's a very, <laughs> oh, I hate this answer. The answer is you set the example and you you reprimand in private. You set the example in public and you reprimand in private. But what I do want to focus on very briefly is is what you don't do. Um, don't out snark the snarkster. Is that is that what you call it? The snarkster, the comedian? Just a few minutes ago, I'm doing this video because it just happened, you know. <laughs> I'm, I, I have to figure out how to, how do you give the scenario without giving the details? Some guy, he didn't seem that young. He was asking questions that he knew the answer to. 
but it, it was more clear that he's just asking the question to to vocalize his disdain, almost as if to just hear his own disdain coming out of his mouth. You know, like, well, why does this have to be X amount of days and why do we have to do it that way? And he keeps drilling this poor guy who was set up to be the leader. You know, that, that's another thing when you're when you're in charge of things that you didn't even choose to be in charge of. That's a whole different video. Um, but finally, this leader responds. He's like, oh, well, now you're asking me about logic, you know, and I've been in the military 28 years and I've never found logic. And that's that's great. You would think it would put to bed. But oh, no. Oh, no. Remember, this guy is a pure comedian. So his response was, well, I've been in 14 years. I've never found it either. Maybe maybe could have died there. Nope, nope. Mr. Leader chimes in. Oh, well, you know, psh, if you find it, you let me know. You message me. And then the other guy, likewise. And so now you got 15, 20 guys, whatever, however big your group is. But they're seeing this exchange here. And it's, it's not productive. It bears zero fruit. There's no respect and authenticity in it. it. It's just one guy saying, oh, look at me, I don't get enough attention and I need to be loved. And the other guy saying, oh, you're challenging my authority and I really wish you wouldn't and let's not be directly confrontational about it and just make jokes. So don't try to out snark the snarky guy. Don't go into anything passive aggressive. You know, don't make yourself the victim. <clears throat> so honestly, here's my answer. No, nobody loves this answer, but in my core tenets of strength, love, and authenticity, the, the big one is authenticity. So it requires strength to be authentic, <clears throat> pardon me, authentic, it requires strength to look someone in the eye and, and not all of a sudden fall back on your defenses, which are jokes and, and victim mindset. Um, so it requires the love side, the compassion, not commiseration, but the compassion to look at this guy and say, hey, look, man, we're all here. I know we're all kind of stuck in the shit. It's unfortunate. They're trying to figure it out themselves also. And we don't have great answers. We're really working for it. You bring up a valid point, but there, we're here. There's nothing There's nothing we can do about it. And if it's really if it's really dragging you down, come talk to me. You know, we're all about to, we're all about to head out and do whatever that thing is about to do. But come talk to me. Come talk to me directly. So the answer is, first off, pull him offline. Get him out of the group. Pull him offline. Then when you're offline, you can take a different tack. You know, don't don't shame someone. Don't put someone on the spot in public. I see that. You see that a lot in the Army. Um, I, I see that sometimes in other services. But that, that's not super effective because then the guy will, will resort to his defensive mechanisms. But the answer is authenticity. The answer is confronting it head on. And But... And, and again, confronting it head on in a way where you don't try to combat snarkiness with snarkiness. Okay, so on the flip side of that, look, man, look, if you are a young enlisted guy and you're listening to this, don't be a dick. That's all I can say. Just be useful. Put your leader hat on too. Maybe, maybe you don't have any troops. Maybe you're not in charge of anyone. But um, how can you be useful? You know, you know what the best thing is for everyone right now. Get through this evolution as quickly and smoothly as possible. Like, fo focus on that. So, how do you deal with snarky subordinates? You got it. You got to address it. You can't just ignore it. I've tr I've tried ignoring it sometimes, and really, what these guys are looking for, they're probing. You know, it's like a comic on stage. They're probing for any laugh, any smirk, any whatever, any dissension they can cause. So, you don't try to like bring the hammer of Thor down and just smash this guy. And you don't go snarky or comic back with him. Um, but really see, see if you can take a breath. I call it the holy pause. <sighs> yeah, man. It sounds like it's really bugging you. And I get it. I, we're, we're all here together. It's cold outside right now. Uh, this thing is unorganized. It seems like they threw it together last minute. But this is what we got right now. Let's do the best we can. And look, instead of us slowing down this evolution... Let's all form it up, get out of here, and you come talk to me. Come talk to me direct, and we'll, and we'll hammer this out. A lot of times, this has been my experience. I talk a lot about strength, love, authenticity. A lot of times, it's that love. I know all these big, bad CEOs, executives, and military guys, we don't want to talk about love, but everyone just wants to feel loved. And for whatever reason, this guy didn't get his opinion heard enough. Feels like 
maybe he's not good enough, feels like his opinion doesn't matter. So there's a way to talk to someone, we'll do this in another video too, but there's a way to talk to someone and say, look, your opinion matters and here is the mission at hand, here's the task at hand, and, and we have to follow through and get this done. So short answer, don't match snark for snark. Don't try to crush it, you know, that'll just make you look like a tool bag. Um, and pull it offline as soon as possible. Hope it helps. Bye.